Weight Shift and Walks, Part 1. So, we've seen that uh, there's significant up and down motion in a walk, and uh, that's going to cause uh, changes of weight, uh, specifically whenever the body is moving with gravity, which would be rising and slowing down, or falling and speeding up, then uh, the body loses weight, uh, and if it's going against gravity, uh, it would be gaining weight. And as we've seen, the um, up and down motion, we tend to uh, rise uh, going into the passing position, and then dropping down to the contact position, then rising up again to the passing position, uh, so forth. Now, this uh, variation in weight is going to be uh, s most noticeable in uh, character effects, such as uh, clothing, hair, uh, so forth, but uh, there's uh, many other elements where this uh, weight shift and weight change uh, is noticeable in the characters. Uh, Richard Williams uh, refers to this variation of weight as a uh, counteraction, and he uh, mentions that in uh, walks. Uh, let's look at some um, walks. So watch carefully the hair, the body, uh, the clothing, everything about these characters, how we see that, that weight variation as they're walking. Uh, now, we can directly measure uh, this weight variation using force plates, which are sort of similar to bathroom scales that measure weight, but they uh, record to a computer and we can uh, graph that as we walk over the force plates. So let's see a little video. So you see up here the data being recorded as our volunteer, uh, Andrew Harkins, is walking across the plates. So um, we see when uh, one foot goes on the plate, the um, weight goes up, then it comes down, up, and then the foot leaves the uh, plate, and at that point the other uh, foot steps on uh, the next plate, and we'll analyze this in, uh, in detail. The first thing to notice is that the amount of weight gain and loss is rather significant. So uh, here, uh, if this um, indicates the uh, average body weight, which would be if the person was just standing on the plate uh, without moving, uh, well, that uh, gain and loss is over a range of nearly 100 pounds uh, from a peak to this uh, lowest point here. So. Um, it's a very significant amount of weight variation, even for a normal walk. Now, uh, this uh, spike that we see here in the weight, uh, this is occurring in uh, this part of the contact pose. So uh, we see that from uh, the right foot, which is the front foot, here um, is where uh, the heel strike occurs, and so weight is starting to be transferred uh, to the right foot, and at that point, the left foot, which is the, um, the rear foot, uh, has a, a spike of weight, and so there's a very significant amount of uh, weight gain uh, at the start of the contact pose. And that continues uh, to the end of the contact pose. So uh, in the end where the back foot is just leaving the back plate, the front foot has a very significant uh, weight spike um, at that point. And in fact, we, uh, for the total weight, we should really be adding these two uh, together. So actually in the middle of the contact pose, if we add the two of them together, that's where the highest amount of weight is, um, almost 50% more uh, weight than if the uh, volunteer was just uh, standing still on the plate. 
Now, the dip that occurs in weight is during the passing position. So here uh, we see uh, this very significant drop in the weight when uh, only the right foot is um, on the plate and the uh, other foot is uh, passing under the torso. So uh, this is less weight than if the person was just standing on the plate, standing on one leg. If they were standing on the plate, standing on one leg, uh, it would just be the um, regular body weight. This is significantly less weight. Now, this uh, weight loss occurs because as you're walking and going through the passing position, the body is rising and slowing down and then falling and speeding up. And so this uh, swinging motion uh, actually produces a weight loss, which we saw in that, in that dip in the uh, force plate uh, measurement of weight. Uh, another way to think about this is that as the body is uh, swinging in this um, arc of rising and then falling, uh, this uh, motion gives us effectively a centrifugal force uh, in the upward direction and that pulls the body upward uh, reducing uh, the weight. Uh, so this is just another way of, of thinking about what's going on. Now as I said the um, this is uh, especially seen in uh, passive overlapping actions such as in character effects so if uh, Harkins had a long ponytail uh, this would be noticeable. If he was wearing a flouncy skirt uh, that would also be uh, noticeable, uh, this um, weight loss through the passing position. So in uh, summary, uh, weight shift in a walk is noticeable in uh, character effects, which are the passive overlapping actions of the motion of hair and cloth, uh, so forth. Uh, variation in, in weight, uh, Richard Williams calls that uh, counteraction. Uh, the effective weight change uh, during a normal walk is uh, rather significant. Uh, this variation is uh, often about 50% of the uh, body weight. Uh, the effective total weight is greatest in the contact pose uh, going from heel strike to toe off. So that's where um, the weight spikes. And the weight uh, drops uh, during the passing position. So as the body is uh, slowing, rising up to the center of the passing position, and then as it's speeding up, as it's uh, falling out of the passing position to the contact pose, that is uh, when the weight actually drops. So this is uh, for a standard normal walk. In uh, part two, we'll look at uh, other situations like uh, walking slow, walking fast, uh, so forth.